Thanks for staying with us and we can now rejoin um, Dr. Shana Sir Philbert, the Senior Medical Officer with Responsibility for Non-Communicable Diseases in the Ministry of Health. We're talking about Caribbean Wellness Day. We lost her for a moment, but she's back on with us now. Um, and you were telling us, um, Doctor, um, about this major activity which will commemorate the celebration of Wellness Day tomorrow um, in the William Peter Boulevard. What's, what's on the schedule? So in, in the morning, we have our formal ceremony and we will be actually recognizing during our ceremony um, persons who've contributed significantly to the health of our nation. So there are about seven, seven entities down who will be recognized during our formal ceremony. We also have, you know, a showcase of our local dance, you know, um, music. We have exhibitions, of course, um, health exhibitions, um, healthy foods. We have, we also have our usual screening. So persons who want to know what their blood pressures, blood sugars, etc., mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. your weight, whether it's, it's actually what it's supposed to be, those persons can come across and, and have that done as well. There will be um, counseling. We have our nutritionist. We have our Bureau of Health Education. We will also have, interestingly, we will have persons coming in just to do physical activity so tomorrow we're actually going to showcase a lot of physical activity what you can do to be active mm -hmm. and we're looking at different forms of physical activity across the lifespan so we're looking at what children can do what persons um what older persons can do so we have dance you know like folk, folk dancing we have drummers we have um hula whoop football you, you there quite, there's quite a, a bit of variety yeah. we also have a feature for persons on wheelchairs because sometimes persons feel that because they're probably not as active they can't go around they can't exercise so we want to showcase that because tomorrow morning during our formal ceremony we're going to be launching something called solution moves right i wanted to and ask you about that doctor uh the solution moves campaign well, what's the aim um, what you hoping to achieve with this this new initiative? Okay, so the the Saint Lucia Moves um, initiative or, or campaign comes um, as a result of the Caribbean Moves um, initiative, which was actually launched in 2018 and then taken up as a project in 2020. But the goal of that is to actually target NCDs, um, well, diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and so on. But for us in Saint Lucia, particularly what we've realized is because of covid we were very inactive um through no fault of ours initially yes there were lockdowns etc but um our levels of obesity likely would have gone up because children were you know indoors mm. and you know children grown-ups etc were indoors as opposed to being out and about and running so we really want to almost like take that 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 um time back um, correct the damage that's been done by getting our whole population up and active so so we're going to launch this competition and it, it's about being active because physical activity is so important in terms of um, being the in, inactivity is a significant risk factor for non-communicable diseases so we want to target all age groups um childhood obesity actually is linked to um diseases like diabetes as the children grow older um cancers um heart disease and so on so we really want to target all our age groups now Lucia moves is uh we we launching it as a ministry of health but it is meant to be a collaborative effort between NGOs, um, businesses, that so we want everybody taking it on. So there will be competitions where, let's say, the Bank of Solution decides that they're going to get their staff moving, you know, uploading, you know, videos, etc. We also want to target community groups, um, you know, through football competitions, netball, etc. Get get persons aware of how important physical activity is, but also get them participating and, and competing you know something fun but but important for for the population so we're rolling it out um we also want um there is a place for being creative about physical activity and we think in solution there's a lot of creativity 
So we want to challenge solutions as, as we roll Solution Moves Out to come up with, with creative ways of, of doing physical activity, be it in your home, you know, etc., and, and sharing that. So, so we will use um, social media to really get that going um, and to get the, the population on board. Initially, um, come this month after it's launched, we're going to start as a Ministry of Health leading out, we're going to be doing what we call Get Active Wednesdays. And every Wednesday, um, Ministry of Health officials will be up and about after work doing various kinds of activity and inviting those who are interested to actually join in. And we're going to be very creative about it. And of course, we want that to be almost like an example for other business places, other organizations to actually get that kind of thing. Because, um, you know, workplace wellness is very important. Um, so I don't know if you get in the gist of this, but um, some Absolutely. feedback, please. Absolutely. Um, we're excited about um, Get Fit Wednesdays as well. And um, we look forward to the rollout of the Solution Moves campaign um, from tomorrow. The campaign I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating is in response to, to non-communicable diseases here on the island. Um, how yeah. prevalent are they? And, and for our citizens who may not be aware, what are we talking about when we say non-communicable diseases or uh, NCDs? Okay, so, so non-communicable diseases. Um, non-communicable is, is a big way of saying that it's not, it's not contagious. Mm. So we're looking at diseases that are not contagious, that you don't get from tra um, being transmitted from one person to the next. So that's, that's the first part of the word. Um, chronic, okay, non-communicable chronic. Chronic, of course, suggesting that it's not a disease you get like a, a common cold or flu that you you get it for a week and you're okay afterwards it's something that stays with you so it's it's con it can be controlled mm -hmm. like diabetes um high blood pressure um you know asthma etc they can be controlled but not cured per se so so you you can keep your disease under control but you you have it you know for for a long period usually for you know the rest of your life okay so we're talking about diseases such as um the, the major, the, of course, the major non-communicable diseases or NCDs, um, such as um, diabetes, um, cardiovascular diseases, that's a general category, but um, you have conditions like high blood pressure and other um, diseases coming under here. Um, we have chronic respiratory diseases like mm -hmm. asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, these come under here as well. And of course, the big, big big killers like cancers all the kinds of cancers mm -hmm. would be under um non-communicable diseases Excellent. and how how important are non-communicable diseases why do we even bother as a ministry to make a fuss about it um for the past at least the past decade in saint lucia when we look at what people are dying of we're talking about adults mm -hmm. 80% of our deaths, okay, and actually it's about 82% to be precise, according to our epidemiology unit, about 82% of our deaths are, uh, um, are secondary to um, our non communicable 82, okay? 82% of, of national deaths. Yes, so eight, let, 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 let's do the simple maths. About 8 people out of 10 people out of who actually 10. die in some wow. deaths actually dying that's, from diseases like that's BT, that's alarming doctor it is alarming and and we we're not we're looking at death but let's let's stretch it a little further mm -hmm. even those persons who don't die remember not everybody will die or die in the same year so even those who don't die um non-communicable diseases like diabetes um heart disease etc they cause what you call premature death so we're having persons dying before their time so let's let's look at it this way we want to live until 70 right mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 our hope our life expectancy is about what 75 you're dying way before that okay so it causes what you call premature mortality you're dying before time but also even if you're living the ncds the, the ncds are such that they 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 decreasing your quality of life so when someone has had a stroke even if he or she has not well did not die okay mm -hmm. 
a stroke may cause him or, or, or her to be disabled um, or, or mm. dependent or lose their job. Of course, one person in a household, a breadwinner, loses his or her job. What happens? My household may go into poverty. I may have children who are at school. As a father, I, I have a stroke, right? Or a heart attack, and now I can't work anymore. What happens to my children? So, so we need to look at all the impacts of um, non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Not only the fact that people are dying, but also the fact that they're they're expensive diseases. They drain the economy, and they also lead households into poverty. They they decrease our productivity. There's just so much that can be said about non-communicable diseases and why it is that we need to be so serious mm. about combating the risk factors for mm. non-communicable diseases and pre preventing, okay? So we, we say that an ounce of prevention is worth a, a pound of cure. Mm. And when it comes to NCDs, that's absolutely, absolutely true. Because if we can keep our children healthy, as they grow up, they stay healthier compared to if let's say mm. obese as children are overweight where they now have risk factors for for ncds and their quality of life will be different so you say so you say at the ministry of health and in the health circles an ounce of prevention is far more valuable than a pound of cure is that it yes definitely definitely excellent let's let's um let's talk about some of these preventative measures um exercise is a big one of those Well, exercise, of course, we're, we're looking at exercise from the premise that, you know, sometimes people think that exercise only helps you physically. Mm. Exercise helps you in so many other ways as well. You know, exercise um, boosts your immune system. Exercise is also very good for your mental health, your, your endorphins, you know, your happy hormones, you know. Um, and when you look at, at being active, um, we're looking at weight, weight um, maintaining a, a, a normal weight. We're looking at decreasing your blood pressure, all right, lowering your blood sugar levels. I'm not saying that diabetics should not take their meds if they exercise. I'm not saying that. I'm being very clear. Mm -hmm. But those that it actually helps. Exercise helps so much more than just like you know keeping your your set yourself with a normal weight. Um, it helps the joints, your muscles, etc. There's there's a lot of benefit mm -hmm. to to exercise and physical activity actually. Yeah. So um. And it's it's something that people can control. Yeah. So um. Another big one, doctor, is our our food choices as well. Um, because a big one a big one for us here is 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 diabetes. I know at one time we had the highest rate of diabetes per capita globally. I don't know if they, these figures have changed, but we seem to be consuming some of the wrong foods, in, in particular sugar substances. Um, diet. Oh man, diet. Diet is a serious issue. Um, of course there are. There's there's a cultural problem mm. also. Um um, and I think perhaps we need to change a lot of what we think is um culturally acceptable so we like as as a, a caribbean people we like very starchy foods we like um our fried foods you know if, if it's not fried it's not good mm. you know um you know you go to the restaurants um and you know you pick up a meal and there are about four different carb portions on the meal mm. and you you have to basically look for the salad mm. because you know if it's <laughs> like really the salad is basically almost like a garnish like you know let me make the, the food look good with a salad and, and you know that's just so wrong because <laughs> we're supposed to have more salad you know and and you know our steamed vegetables our beans etc on on our plates as opposed to all of those carbs so so we we it, you know I've, I've been places and people say oh but that's uh, that's all the, the rice you put for me and you know that's all the mac and cheese but that's not enough you know, and you know, like I think we need to change our culture in terms of eating, and start from our children. Start from our preschools where we teach our children what to eat. Um, I remember um, at a particular preschool, children were not allowed to bring in juices. Okay, and of course the sugars um, we expose our children to, we give our children a lot of sugars, and those sugars translate into fats. 
okay um and we wonder why the kids are putting on weight because they're sitting on a gadget they're having a lot of juice and the junk food and you know the fried foods etc but that we need to change our culture and we need to start places that that matter like the schools we mm -hmm. have to you know change change make some significant changes in terms of the school nutrition policies mm. which we actually work with really. because the children can now go to the parents and say okay um the teacher said x or y you know and and, and give that information to them interesting that you're working on that um, school nutrition policy and that you worked on it because uh, um, that policy doesn't only incorporate and not to go too much into it now it doesn't only incorporate what parents give their students but what schools serve at, at the canteens as well yes definitely so we're looking actually one of the things we we're trying to get um buying on is actually not only just the canteens but even around mm. the the schools right trying to make sure that children are not taking in too many sugars etc so controlling what is in the schools um for sale but also um controlling what's directly outside of our school so that children aren't opening the you know going through the gate and buying all the junk food because they can't get it into the schools mm -hmm. because we feel that um well not we feel the research shows that if you can protect children at school especially and teach them how to eat well yeah. then you know they will eat better. yeah they'll go with but the, they spend yeah. many months at school yeah they will go with those good habits over time days at school yes yeah. Um, hopefully you, you begin to make that change and you begin to start that discussion at your activity um, tomorrow in the William Peter Boulevard again. The, the, the healthy food options will be available, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating. Yes, yes. We have, we have exhibitions. We have our healthy food options. That We, we have a few booths. People will be able to buy food and get, get samples, etc. It's it's you know it's it's excellent. It's and, a showcase, and you start you st a showcase of health. I like that a health festival, if you may. You start off yes, at nine thirty. Yes. You start off at nine thirty again. Your last appeal to members of the public: why they should come out and support and partake in this activity for Caribbean Wellness Day tomorrow. Tomorrow will be grand. We want solutions to come in and and be part of the action if you work we have a, a physical activity jams after work session you can't miss it walk if your sneakers walk if your t-shirt we will be giving out little you know freebies and so on you can't afford to miss this we show we focusing on health mm. and wellness you have got to be there yeah. Interesting discussion, Dr. Um, Cyril Philbert. I want to thank you for coming on. Somebody who joins me next um, says that they agree with everything that you're saying. She has um, no to zero carbs in her diet, um, no hard food as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, continue that discussion. I'm, I'm looking forward to a possibility of collaborating with you guys on um, your Get Moving or Get get Moving Wednesdays. Yeah, no, Solution get, moves. Yeah, yeah. your get moving Wednesdays. Was it or stay fit Wednesdays? Get active, yes. Get active Wednesdays. Get active of course, Wednesdays. Feel free. Feel free. If you if we can do a promo every Wednesday to get people yeah. at the ministry doing what we're doing. There'll be walks, there'll be different things, but we're gonna be very creative about our physical activity and yeah. be catering for 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 various um religious beliefs and everything else. So we really, you know, want to get all our citizens moving. We'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much, Doctor. You're welcome. Do Bye. Dr. Shana Siri Filbert, um, Senior Medical Officer of Responsibility for Non-Communicable Diseases, speaking to us here on um, this edition of Beyond the Headlines, ahead of a major activity tomorrow in celebration of Caribbean Wellness Day. You want to be at the William Peter Boulevard in Cash Trees and take in all the exhibitions, take in the showcase and soak in all the information. Let's get moving and let's um, become a healthier society starting tomorrow. Um, the uh, big one in the William Peter Boulevard. Thank you so much to um, Dr. Sir Philbert for joining me on the program this morning. My next guest is already standing by. We're going to flip the script.